and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of techno lust, and today we are building a payload for SITREP. What does that mean? Situation report. To be quite honest, I learned that from Battlestar Galactica, but it's a military term and it means like what is going on. And to be honest, one of the very first things I ever do when I hop on a box is I want to find out who am I and where am I. And literally, who am I is sometimes actually, who am I is the command I'm running as root because I'm here on my Kali Linux box. Um, but we're going to be doing this from the perspective of our packet squirrel and we're going to be building a payload which will automatically scan the network and give you a visualization of, I would say, the battlefield because we're using that military jargon. But really, I'm, I guess I'm just saying we're going to find out who our neighbors are because we might have some interesting neighbors. So let's just go ahead and start out by SSHing over to our packet squirrel. And really this is going to apply to any box that has bash and nmap or any of those standard tools. I mean, we could be doing this from Kali. The situation is pretty much the same. We're just building a payload for our packet squirrel to do this automatically. So if I just run if config here and I can see I've got two interfaces, I've got F0, which is the one that's connected to my Kali Linux box here. And then I've got F1, which is connected to the rest of the network. Well, if I take a look at that network, I can see F1 has an IP address of 192.168.84.48. And it gets itself a net mask of 255.255.255.0. And so I can look at that as a human and know like, oh, okay, so there are 255 potential nodes on this network. It's a slash 24 in CIDR notation. And I know that because I have experience with networks. And if the CIDR notation thing threw you for a loop, go and check out Hack Tip. Shannon did a great one on just this and you'll have some better bearings. But basically, I know uh, the size of this network so I know what to pass to my best friend Nmap. Check this out. If I run nmap with a tac sp, that's just gonna do a quick and easy little scan, I can give it the IP address that I have, 192.168.86. You know, really, whatever. Uh, and you give it that slash 24 I was talking about. And it's gonna go ahead and scan the entire network and tell you who's around. And in my case, it's a slash 24. And there we go, we've got a bunch of uh, IPs on the network that are up. In fact, hey, check this one out right here. It's uh, Philips Lighting, blah, blah, blah. And you know what that is, that's my um, hue lights because I like the hue lights. Anyway, uh, the problem with this though is I got that information the way that I typically do when I hop on a box, which is do, 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 to run if config. Well, that's great, but there's no way for me to pass that information that what Nmap expects, that insider notation net mask of slash 24 from what I can see there. So that's the problem. I want to automate this so it's going to happen every time I plug in my packet squirrel with this payload. Well, as you might imagine, yes, there are ways to convert this 255.255.255.0 into slash 24 with a bunch of awesome hacks and bash and Perl and Python. And yeah, we could do that. Or, or we could, you know, use the modern way and do it the right way, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I have this problem where I've got the muscle memory of typing in uh, if config, but really I should be typing in IP. So IP is basically a uh, one of the many tools in the IP route to package, which is the modern way to do stuff in Linux. And if I do IP ADDR show. I can see, hey, there's the information I'm looking for. I don't think it's as pretty, but hey, this is the modern way to do it, so I'm just gonna go with the flow. If config, you've served me really well. You were a part of the Net Tools package, which came out with BSD 4.2 in 1983. Guess what else came out in 1983? So with IPIC, I get my IP address here and I get the net mask in CIDR notation, that slash 24 there. So let's go ahead and just get that. For that, we'll do IP ADDR show again, but in this case, we're only interested in F1. So I do that and okay, well, I get two results. Now I just want one of those. Let's do the one that's uh, the second one that starts with INET. So we'll grep for INET and there we go. That's just the information I require, at least out of that line, but it's only that second part here that has the IP address that I'm really interested in. I want separately the IP address and then I want separately the net mask. So for that, I'm basically just gonna go ahead and use my good friend awk to print out the second part of that line by doing dollar sign two there, and there you go. Now. Since I'm interested in them separately, I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart using an aptly named tool, cut. 
and we'll tell it the delimiter is that slash and I'm gonna tell it which field I want. Field number one is the IP address, there you go, and field number two is the netmask. There we are, I have everything that I need now to do that same nmap command except automated. Let's see how that looks. Basically, nmap with what I say I like, tag sp, and we're gonna go ahead and first tell the IP address. Now I'm gonna do dollar sign and then two parens. And basically what that means is, says run everything inside of these parentheses first and the output of whatever that is becomes the variable. It's kind of like algebra. So in this case, I'll run that, uh, that command again and I'm just gonna copy pasta that. And then we'll do slash and then again this, but second one, the one that gives me the field two, and that goes inside of its own dollar parens. Boop. I know it's looking pretty long, but when I run this, I get the same output as the previous one, except with all the, all the thinky thinkies, which means I, I've automated the me, which is good. And there we are. We can see all our hosts. Awesome. So let's turn this into a payload. Now, this is really quick and dirty. I'm just doing a proof of concept from the command line on the packet squirrel to make sure it works. And now I'm just gonna real quick adapt it to my needs by heading over to the packet, uh, the uh, payload directory and creating a new payload file. In payloads, I don't know, we'll assign it to switch one and I'm gonna go nano payload.sh. Started with a shebang, bin bash. Now with the packet squirrel payload, we are gonna have to specify which net mode to use or which network mode. You've got a few different ones to choose from, whether you're cloning the interface or being transparent or just using NAT or bridge or VPN. In this case, it's NAT that I want because I want the packet squirrel to get an IP address from the network so I can scan it. So net mode, NAT. And then the next thing is to make those uh, variables. So we'll call the first one CIDR and the second one IP. And we know from our previous example that CIDR is field two and IP is field one. And then the other thing that I probably want to do is make the nmap options a variable of options so that anybody else using this payload can just change that one part of the string. It probably doesn't make so much sense for like a five line payload, but it'll make sense down the line. Now finally we can go ahead and just run nmap as we did before, but instead of having our super long command this time we can use those variables. And we probably want the contents of that file to go somewhere that we can then read later, so just to make this quick and easy, I'm going to pipe the output into a file in the, I don't know, slash root called nmap.log and we'll of course use two wakas to append. Save the file, make it executable, and there we go. Let's reboot, have our payload run, and see the output. So in terms of the packet scroll, it's just a matter of unplugging the power, flipping the switch over to switch position one, that's where we put our payload, and give it power again. Wait a few seconds. Now you'll notice I didn't really do much in terms of prettying this up. Uh, I didn't even put an LED command in here, so I'm not gonna know when it's done but the oven is. All right, so I've done some quick debugging. I've run the payload. I've now switched back to arming mode and let's take a look at what we got and the tweaks that I made to get this to work beautifully. Now I can cap my nmap log here and I see there's all of the hosts. So that's kind of what I expected to see. Happy with that. And if I take a look at the payload here, basically the big thing that I've done, okay, I've prettied it up, given an LED setup at the top before the net mode so I know that, hey, it's setting up the network. Then I sleep for five seconds right after setting the net mode. And the reason for that is, while saying net mode NAT, I've said, okay, cool, set yourself up so you get an IP address from the network. I can't immediately then just start scanning it because guess what? I need to wait for the DHCP server on the other end of the network to say, oh hey, welcome to the network. Here's an IP, let's be best friends. So I just do a sleep five in kind of the similar way that you might on the USB rubber ducky do a, you know, a, a, a sleep 1000 before you start injecting keystrokes because you just showed up on a computer and you can't just start sending frames down the wire before it goes like, hey, hey let's see your keyboard, let's be friends. So 
common mistake and I even just made it myself and that is maybe one of the big takeaways here is you always have to think about payloads in terms of computers running things rather than humans running things. Where as a human, we're constantly, you know, just like, okay, there, there's those nuances, there's pauses that we don't, that we take for granted because we can't type like machines. But when we start programming machines to communicate with machines, well, they operate at the speed of, well, many, many megahertz. So, in this case, I've gone ahead and waited five seconds so that I get a chance to obtain the IP address from the network. Then the rest of it is pretty much the same idea, grabbing the CIDR, grabbing the IP address. I know this could all just be the same command. Uh, and then setting our options, doing LED attack to let myself know, hey, we're now doing the attack part. Then we run nmap with our options against the IP with the netmask in CIDR notation and we pipe it into a file. And notice since I don't have an ampersand at the end of it, it's not running in the background, so it's actually gonna be blocking the rest of my script, which is good, which is what we want because the very next line is gonna say LED finish. Hey, I'm actually done with this payload. It's safe to eject. So a very quick and simple proof of concept that you can do to scan the network. And it is just that. It's a proof of concept. It's a total hack. And I can't tell you how many times, like on a site, I will whip up a quick payload that is an absolute hack that works for me. And it's great because it gets the job done in that limited scenario. Whereas I could have also just said hard code slash 24 is the net mask, but it just wouldn't be portable when I take it to the next location. So I just wanted to point that out because we're going to build on top of this and I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback about that so go ahead and leave a comment below feedback at hack5.org and until next week i'm darren kitchen trust your techno lust if you've got a great idea bring it to the web the way we do and head over to domain.com i can't tell you how many times their domain discovery system has helped me find the perfect name and their quick and easy checkout process means it's online in no time flat and get this the guys over at domain.com have been supporting hack5 for years and they want to hook you up get 20 percent off at checkout at domain.com with the coupon code hak5 and send your thanks over on twitter at domain.com so when you think domain names think domain.com